Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson four, identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in tables. Example one, which team will win the race? You have decided to walk in a long distance race. There are two teams that you can join. Team A walks at a constant rate of 2.5 miles per hour. Team B is going to be walking four miles the first hour, and then a consistent two miles per hour after that. So they're going to go quickly and then slow down and then maintain two miles per hour after the first hour. So the task here is to create a table for each team showing the distance that would be walked from times one, two, three, four, five, and six hours. Using your tables, answer the questions. So, looking at team A, they walk at a constant rate of 2.5 miles per hour. The key word here is constant. Constant means never changing. So if they walk 2.5 miles per hour and they walk for one hour, they're going to walk 2.5 miles. If they walk for two hours, it's going to be 2.5 times 2, or 5 miles. After the third hour, we're going to go another 2.5 miles. That will bring us to 7.5. And then we're going to, on the fourth hour, we're going to add another 2.5. Now they've gone 10 miles. The fifth hour, they're going to go 12.5 miles. And the sixth hour will be 15 miles. Okay. So here's how far they will go after six hours of walking. 15 miles. Team B, on the other hand, will walk four miles the first hour. So hour one, they walk four miles. And then two miles per hour after that. So now they're going to be another consistently or constant rate of two miles per hour after the first hour. So in hour two, they're going to go two miles. So four plus two is six. Hour three, they're going to go two more miles. Now they're up to eight. So if you see what's happening here, team A only went two and a half miles, but team B went four the first hour. But team A went two and a half miles the second hour, where team B only went two miles, so they caught up by a half a mile. So now we're going from 2.5 to 4, which this, this team's a mile and a half ahead, and now they're only a mile ahead. So as you can see, team A is going to start catching up because they're going a half mile an hour faster. And then on the fourth hour, adding two hours to that, eight, we're going to be at 10. So right here, as you can see, after hour four, they went the same distance. In hour five, they're going to go another two. In hour six, they are going to go another two. Okay. So they got past here, then further ahead here. So team A went the further distance. So now we're going to answer the questions that are in um, below. A, for which team is a distance proportional to time. Explain your reason. Okay, so the answer to that would be distance is proportional to time for each, for team A, since all the ratios comparing distance to time are equivalent. The value of each ratio is 2.5. Every measure of time can be multiplied by 2.5 to get the corresponding measure of distance. So 2.5 times 1, 2.5 times 2, 2.5 times 3, 2.5 times 4, and so on. But I can't do that here. 1 times 2 is not 4. 2 times 2 is not 6. 3 times 2 is not 8. And so on and so on. Now B says, explain how you know the distance for the other team is not proportional to time. Okay, for team B, the ratios are not equivalent. The values of the ratios are 4, 3, 8 thirds, 5 halves, 12 fifths, and 7 thirds. So what we're doing is taking 4 divided by 1 is 4, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 3 is 8 over 3, 10 divided by 4 reduces to 5 over 2, 12 fifths, and 7 thirds. Over here, 2.5 divided by 1 is 2.5, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, 7.5 divided by 3 is 2.5. So there's the reason 1 is proportional. C, at what distance in the race would it be better to be on team B than team A? Next one. Okay, so if we look back here, well, team B is ahead after hour one. They're still ahead after hour two. They're still ahead after hour three. 
they're tied after hour four. So up until hour three, it'd be best to be on D. Okay, so if the race were fewer than 10 miles, team B would be fast because more distance would be covered in less time. So fewer than 10 miles. If the members on each team walked for 10 hours, how far would each member walk on each team? Okay, so in this case, you want to multiply by how far they're going. So I'm going to go back here. So after 10 hours, this table only goes up to 6 hours. Team A has a constant rate of 2.5 miles per hour. So for Team A, all I have to do is A equals the hours times the rate they're going, which equals 2.5 miles. Team B went 4 miles the first hour. Then two, and then two miles after that. So if I go back and look at my table, it might be easier at this point to just say, well, at six it's 14, seven will be 16, eight will be 18, and 10 will be 20. Is that correct? Six, 14, seven, 16, eight, 18, nine, 20, and then 10, 22. I did double check that. So B, it would be 22 miles. So A was a, was a constant, so I could just multiply hours times that. B is something else that we haven't gotten into yet, so I just used the table to get to the value I was looking for. E, will there always be a winning team, no matter what the length of the course? Why or why not? Well, the answer is no, because... Back here and show you, I drew the arrow there. At hour four, there's no winner. So at hour four, they were tied at 10 miles. Okay, so there will not be a winning team if the teams just go 10 miles, but other than 10 miles, Team B would be in the lead less than 10. Team A would always be in the lead after 10. F, if the race is 12 miles long, which team should you choose to be on if you wish to win? Okay, so as I just said, any team after 10 miles, A is always going to be in the lead, so I would say Team A. Okay, and the reason is they're going to be faster now because they're going two and a half miles an hour so they pass the team and they're going at a faster rate two and a half versus two i'm not going to write all of that but that is the reason so g is how much sooner would you finish on that team compared to the other team okay so 12 miles long so for team a what i would do is 12 times 2.5 which equals 30 Okay. For B, what we have to do is take the table and expand it. So let me just go back and look at this table again. So here we are up to six, and the question is asking, how much sooner would you finish on that team compared to the other team? They're talking about 12 mile long race. So I'm going to expand, extend this down to 12. So I'm going to do this over here. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're just adding 2 to this column and bringing it over to this next column here. So 6, 14, 7 will be plus 2, 16, 18, 20, 22, which we already moved from that other question. 11 would be 24, and 12 would be 26 miles. So now if I go back to here, it would be 26 miles for Team B. So how much sooner would Team A finish compared to the Team B? It would be 30 minus 26, 4 
miles. And that's how much further they would go. I said, how much sooner would you finish than the other team? So at 12 miles, so what they're asking is how long did it take to go 12 miles? So 12 miles, it took team B five hours. For team A, 12 miles took less than five hours. So I read that wrong, so I answered one question, but let's now answer this one. How much sooner would you finish than the other team? So if I want to know how long it took me to go 12 miles, then I say 2.5 times H equals the distance of 12 miles. And I would divide by 2.5, divide by 2.5. H is going to equal 2.5, 100, or 12, and then add a zero. 25 will go into 124 times, which is 100, and then 25 will go into 208. Okay, so it's going to be 4.8 hours. And so team A would take 4.8 hours to go this 12 miles, and team B would take five hours to go 12 miles. How much fat sooner? Now that would be five miles minus 4.8 miles, I'm sorry, hours. I'm stuck on miles for, for some reason. Five hours minus 4.8 hours and we're going to get 0 0.2 hours. Okay, 0.2 hours, which is 12 minutes. Okay, exercise one. Bella types at a constant rate of 42 words per minute. That's the number of words she can type proportional to the number of minutes she types. Create a table to determine the relationship. Okay, the key word here is constant rate. So the answer to this question is, is it proportional? The answer is yes, it is proportional because it is constant. You type 42 min words per minute. So all you're doing is taking 42 times the minute, 42 times 1, 42 times 2, and so on. 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1. 6 times 4 is 24, plus that 1. And 42 times 6, 0. 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 24, 2,520. So all I have to do really is add a zero to six. But from six to sixty, so it's a multiple of ten. All I have to do is put a zero there. So there is our table filled out, and it is proportional. Okay, number two. Mark recently moved to a new state. During the first month, he visited five state parks. Number of state parks five. Number of months one. So I'm filling in the table. Each month after he visited. Two. Complete the table below and use the results to determine if the number of parks visited is proportional to the number of months. Okay, so I already know it is not because it's not a constant rate of five. If he visited five state parks the first month, he's got to continually visit five every month for it to be proportional. Since he's only going to visit two more states each month after the first month, I'm now adding two to the original, which would be seven. Three would be nine. Okay, and then we have to figure out our 23. All right, so we already know it's not proportional. And now we have to determine 23. Is it four? Is it five? Is it six? Okay, so if two is to seven, I'm going to do this a different way. Now, there are many ways we can figure this out. We can do trial and error. We can go 4, 5, 6, 7 until we get to 23. Or I can just say um, we know that for the first month we did five state parks and then two more parks that many after. Okay, so if it, it, it is constant after the first. So it's going to go 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23. And there's our 23. And, but it's hard to keep track of how many that is. But think of it this way. Take away the first month and take away that additional 3. Take away 3 from here and we have 20. And then divide by our new constant after the first month of 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 
So in 10 months, give us 23 standard times. Remember they did it, this was two plus three. This is two, 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 forever after that. So all I did was subtract three from here. So I was thinking 20, 20 divided by two, these twos is 10. And there's our addition of three. All right, number three. The table below shows the relationship between the lengths of a square and the area. Lengths of any square, the side lengths of the square. I was going to stay there seven seconds. The side lengths of a square and its area. Complete the table, then determine that the length of the sides is proportional to the area. Okay. So, side length of inch is one, area square inch is one, because we know area equals the base times the height. So if I have a square, and it's one by one, it's one times one for the area, which is one. Number two is, if I have a square, and this side is two, and this side is two, area equals the base times the height. Area equals two times two, which is four. So all we're doing is, and whenever we multiply a number by itself, it's called squaring. So really all I have to do to answer this question is square this, square this, square this. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, eight squared is 64, and 12 squared is 144. Okay, so if I multiply one, what do I have to multiply one by to get one? It's one times one. So then if it is proportional, then I have to use that same multiple every time. Well, 2 times 1 is not 4, 3 times 1 is not 9, and so on. So the relationship is not proportional. Okay, so the relationship is not proportional. There is no constant value that can be multiplied by the side length to get the corresponding area. That is the end of lesson 4. Go do your problem set.